So right now, newborn screening is approved in pretty much the whole United States. Uh, we're missing one state at this point. Uh, other than that, all the newborns are now uh, tested for SMN1. There are some states that will test for SMN1 and also will give you the SMN2 cup. Once that newborn screening comes positive, the Department of Health of each state will contact the pediatrician and the neuromuscular that was assigned for that area. And the patient will be scheduled to be seen in clinic really quickly. We will actually perform a, a confirmatory test. So we do have to send another blood sample to get the SMN1 testing to see if there is a deletion. 95% of the patients of the disease is caused by deletions, and that's what it can be captured by the newborn screening. And it will also, like here in Texas, will also will give us the SMN2 copy number, which is, will help us to see, you know, to think where is that patient going to end up, right? But it's important always to remember that there is that 5% of patients that can have uh, deletion in one allele and a mutation on the other one. So those are called heterozygous mut uh, mutations. And those patients are not identified by newborn screening. So still we need the pediatricians and we need the family practitioners and everybody who sees these babies early in life to still remember that this condition exists and that it needs to be diagnosed by them clinically first with you know low muscle tone, weakness sometimes if it's severe from the beginning, difficulty, progressive difficulty feeding and progressing difficulty breathing. And again, in the U.S., we're lucky because we have newborn screening in most states. Always remember that 5% of patients that are not going to get caught by the newborn screening. And getting treatment early, it's extremely key. In my mind, in my mind, and that's my own experience, and in my mind, I don't really think that we should be guiding the time of treatment uh, depending on the number, the copy number. And I say this because I have had patients with four copies that uh, even though they have four copies, so they should be strong, right? Uh, they still present with spinal muscle atrophy when they are 10, 12 years of age, and they present with progressive weakness. So now we're getting these newborns diagnosed with four copies. And some of the insurance will say, oh, but they have four copies, we can wait. I don't think we can wait, but because this is progressive, there is still, the damage is happening. The difference is how quick will happen, but it's still happening. Even if it's a type two or type three or any type, there is progressive damage. So why we're going to see it and wait until the damage, you know, it's it's more visible. Why we don't treat them from the beginning, knowing that the disease is there. So that's the only thing I wanted to kind of compliment.